Volunteer Chris in a red uniform with yellow trim and a tall yellow hat. And Volunteer Rick in a green hunter's frock with a black hat. Good morning. I am Christopher Petronas and representing a member of the British 44th Regiment, which was a regular British infantry regiment that fought in America during the French and Indian War. They got here in 1755 and were in all the major campaigns of that war. Uh, today I'm carrying what's known as a Longland Pattern Brown Bess. It's what uh, people kind of consider the, the standard issue of British Brown Bess of, of the French Indian War and the Revolutionary War was actually a progression of a, a couple of different models of Brown Bess. They learned how what worked, what didn't, maybe uh, went from a wooden ramrod to a metal ramrod, things of that nature, and refined it a little bit as, as time went on. But this, at this point, is the standard issue uh, weapon of the British infantry. I'm specifically portraying a grenadier. They were considered the, uh, I guess, elite shock troops of the time period. Uh, originally hailed back from the days when they did throw grenades on the battlefield. But by the time of the French and Indian War, that was pretty much over. Now, a typical musket of that time period was about a 75 caliber barrel or three quarters of an inch. The ball that came out was typically about 72 caliber. So it was a little bit more loose fitting in the barrel that facilitated quick loading. Now, <clears throat> there's several steps that are going through to fire this particular weapon. It is a uh, flint lock, which means basically in this hammer here, you have a piece of flint. And when you go to fire the weapon, the flint strikes this hardened part here and creates a spark. Those sparks are going to hopefully fall into the pan that you just exposed when this flipped open. Those sparks will hopefully ignite the gunpowder that you put in the pan, which in a best case scenario will go through the little hole in the side of the barrel and will hopefully ignite the gunpowder in the bottom of the barrel, thereby pushing the ball out. So like I said, it's a fairly long drawn out process to load this, but a good infantryman can do it approximately three times per minute. Everybody was trained to load and fire the same way so that it created shotgun effect when the troops fired all at once. Although once they got into the woods and more broken up formations, it did very often evolve into men firing and loading as fast as they could necessarily, not trying to do that shotgun effect as they would in linear tactics. Everybody starts out at the shoulder, so what I'll do is just a quick uh, dry run without actually loading and firing. They start here at the shoulder, and uh, basic command is prime and load. At this time period, you come up here first, then bring the weapon down. Now, I have turned my body so that I've got room to load my weapon when we're packed uh, rank on rank up next to each other. I'm covering the lock with my arm. First thing I do is put my weapon on half cock, which is bringing the, bringing the hammer halfway back. And if you've ever heard the term, don't go off half cock, that's what this comes from. It's almost like a safety position right now. The weapon won't go. I handle my cartridge, so I take out a preformed paper cartridge that has approximately 110 grains of double F black powder in it and on the lead ball we were talking about earlier, all performed ready to go. Bite off the end of the cartridge so that you're exposing the black powder and I will pour a little bit of that into the pan. And the next command, so this would still be in my hand, they say shut pan, cast about, pan gets shut, the weapon now comes around to the side, charged with cartridge, I'm putting the rest of the gunpowder and the ball down the barrel and just getting it started with my fingers. You can't ram it all the way home yet without the ramrod. Here comes the important part. Withdraw rammer, shorten rammer, ram down cartridge. So we've now pushed that ball and all that gunpowder to the bottom, hopefully. Draw rammer, return rammer, We have now bring the weapon up to this position. When the sergeant looks down the line and he sees all of his troops with uh, the weapon up in this position, he knows that they are all loaded and ready to fire. We'll then say, make ready. Now put the weapon on full cock, so it will, the uh, hammer will potentially fly forward. Present. Give fire. Boom. Hopefully the weapon goes off. You immediately bring it back down here to your priming loading position reorientating yourself from the ranks so that you can do your maneuvers without whacking into the guy next to you. So that's the basic premise uh, of how this particular weapon is loaded and fired. 
in combat conditions. Seems long and laborious, but once you uh, have it done, it becomes rote muscle memory. And like we said, a good infantryman can do it three to uh, three times a minute. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm Richard Holgate. I'm portraying a ranger from that same period. I have basically the same musket. This is a 1746 first model brown vest. But now you notice that mine is slightly different in that it has a shorter barrel. That's because we did not wear a bright, gaudy outfit that made a perfect shot or perfect target for the, uh, for the Indians and for the French. We wore a dark outfit because we patrolled the woods. We went out, we ranged out, we patrolled, we located the enemy, we noted their numbers, their positions, we brought it back to the troops and the troops could attack it in a informed manner. For that matter, we would darken our muskets so that they would not flash in the woods. We would be less likely to be seen. As far as loading, we did basically exactly the same except that we did it quietly without somebody telling us how to do it because we wanted to be stealthy and quiet. Same exact process. Hammer a half cock. Remove the cover. Handle cartridge. We a lot of times carry belly bags simply because if we carried the large bag and the other accoutrements and running through the woods, it would flap and make a lot of noise. So we wouldn't want that. So we would try to make things as simple and carry just as few things as possible. Perhaps a possible bag with our equipment and our gun, cartridges, and we're ready to go. Hammer the half cock, handle cartridge, pull the cartridge out, bite it off, prime, close, cast about, pour the rest of the powder in, move the rammer, reverse it, load, grab the back, now, if we were in a heated battle, a lot of times we'd stick that rammer in the ground so it would be very handy. And then we would fire at will, pull the hammer back, and again, if we're lucky, we'd get a fire, it would fire. And we'd go right back to just loading and firing as fast as we could. A lot of times we did not line up in lines as they did traditionally in those days. We fought running through the woods in the Indian fashion, from behind cover, from behind fences, Suddenly, how we perform it in the French and Indian War. Shoulder, fire locks. Take care of the final load. Prime in, load. I'd say do it on your own. Let's not worry about the individual commands in terms of cast about. Make ready, present, give, fire. 